Okay, let's just kind of keep on working on drums. I'm going to leave everything else down for now, and we're still just trying to get drums balanced and where I feel like they're in a pretty aggressive spot. some weird kind of notchiness in these toms. kind of a common thing that I'll find myself doing sometimes is doing some, these aren't really narrow uh, dips, but like treating some troubled areas, but then that'll leave that whole, that whole area of the frequency spectrum sounding a little dull. So then I'll kind of do like a wide boost over the whole area just to rebalance it in a macro sense while still kind of reducing some of the um, like more defined frequency areas that are bugging me. Now that I'm starting to realize that with this kind of crappy snare sound, we're gonna to have to get more of it using samples. I'm gonna kind of go back and readjust the snare mic to, to play a bit more of a complementary or possibly even secondary role, which in this case means pulling some top end down because it's just kind of giving me some papery bleed issues. So that's just sort of stuff you kind of discover as the mix goes on. You're like, well, this this these snare mics really aren't going to cut it to be the primary snare sound, so I still want them in there. Otherwise, um, we'll just lose any feel that we had, you know, with the drum performance. But we're going to kind of adjust their shape uh, to kind of play the role that they're going to end up playing, which is going to be more of a complementary supportive role. So pulling down some of the top end because it doesn't have to be as balanced. Like now, when I listen to these solo, they they maybe will sound a bit dull, but with the snare samples, they'll sound fine, and I will have less of the downside of, you know, the bleed issues and things like that. I think I'm going to throw a little bit of that SSLJ on here.
goddamn train going by the studio. You guys might not be able to hear it, but it's really annoying. It makes it real difficult for me to hear what the hell is going on. It's almost gone. I hate trains. Someone was wondering uh, why when you make adjustments, you angle your head and ear to listen. Um, is that something that you've always done? Or... Do I, do I really uh, do and I told him this because I told him it's because you have one monitor in the floor and one in the ceiling. <laughs> but uh, what's the yeah, real? I, I have honestly I have no idea. Um, I do have a camera like right in front of one of my monitors. I'm not sure how big a role that's playing. I haven't really done an AB, so maybe it's like tweaking something. I don't know. I think it's because I'm part canine. You know, like that's what I thought too. A dog whistle and dogs are like. Okay. And these dynamic sections, which I suppose isn't that bad. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out a way to control that somehow. see what the dynamic settings are for our snare samples uh curves i usually link these i'm going to drop this to 80 give us a little bit more control over those and let's just kind of see what our shape looks like overall yeah so these are actually like almost too loud i may turn these back up later but um I pull down some of the highest points here. Maybe it'll bring the rest of our song a little more into balance. done much to overheads uh i'm already feeling the need to pull a little more of the room out of them so let's do that How do you determine how much low end to click ratio on the kick? That's actually really hard to get right. It is really hard. Um, at first. Uh, a, a lot of it for me is just knowing my monitors and my monitoring environment. Uh, and right now I'm just looking for something that feels balanced and not totally out of whack with the whole kit. Um, that's going to come more into play when I have bass and guitars on the full mix and I have a, a, uh, uh, some bus comp and some processing on the two bus. And honestly, that low end amount on the kick is probably the one thing that I still occasionally do car tracks for. It's literally the only element that I still feel the need to listen on different sources. Like I'm so confident in my listening environment and these barefoots have killer bottom end, but it's almost like they can, they're so capable that I can't tell when too much is too much because they can handle it. You know, but I know in my car, if I get in my car and I crank the fuck out of my car stereo and the kicks are farting, then I've pushed it too far. I'm sure that's really great for my ears, but I still listen to shit cranked in my car all the time. It just sounds too good. Um, I mean, but, you kind of need to su hear this style of music loud at yeah. times. I mean, that's, to, how it's, that's how it's being listened to. And yeah, like just to get an accurate picture of mm -hmm. what you're doing. You gotta listen yeah. loud at times. Um, and I mix majority, uh, majority at majority, uh, majority at pretty conservative levels here. So it's not too loud. It's not real quiet, but so it's majority um, conservative. Majoritively conservatively volumed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but but I have found that in my case anyway, to really judge low end, sometimes I gotta crank it up. So. 
when we're nearing the end of this mix and I've got bass and I've got everything in there to really feel how those are playing together, I, I got to push it a bit. Um, and I just try not to do it for too long. If you're I'm majoritely to... agree with you. Yeah. Also me. 